And I would now recognize the ranking member of the Trade Subcommittee, Mr. McDermott, for his opening statement. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It's often said that generals are always fighting the last war instead of the one we're in. And that's exactly what today's markup feels like. The Republicans seem to be stuck in the past reopening debates that were raging before I got here and I thought were settled long ago in a bipartisan way. And as a result, this mock-up is a mess. It didn't need to be that way. In the 21st century, our trade agreements have to accomplish three things. They have to help business, they have to help workers, including American workers, and they have to help promote U.S. interests and values. Instead, the Republicans have turned their backs on the realities of globalization and the workers of this country. They are running as fast as possible to the failed policies of the past. They are making the same old failed theological arguments about the perfect beauty of free markets as if they had learned nothing about the world economy in the last 30 days or 30 years. When they've done right, trade agreements can foster economic growth and prosperity but there are some negative consequences to trade and all the Republican political red meat talking points in the world won't make them go away. In exchange for growth in trade, growth that I think must be shared by all, some workers lose their jobs in the face of increasing competition. Trade adjustment assistance is specifically designed to get these people back on their feet and into new good paying jobs in sectors of the economy that are growing. Two years ago, there was consensus on this economic reality and good policy. Now, the chairman has assured us we're going to have a markup sometime out there, and only a fool on this dais would believe that that should assure anybody of anything. We know that bills go over to the Senate, and the filibuster comes up, and we never see them again. The reason TAA has to be in these agreements is if it doesn't go with these agreements, it will die in the Senate. This Congress has allowed TAA to lapse in February. We are now getting denials in May of people applying for the benefits, and yet we're told, well, wait and hope and believe, and we'll have a markup sometime, someday, sometime, if we happen to be in session. Now, Democrats and Republicans working together hammered out the 2009 TAA program reforms, which overhauled the program and brought it into the 21st century. Republicans and Democrats alike touted the bipartisan accomplishment. Chairman Camp himself said, quote, this important package provides a coherent, rational, accountable, and cost-effective system for trading trade-affected workers and putting them back to work quickly and at better jobs. What happened to that reality-based agreement? What happened to the shared recognition of the importance of retraining trade-impacted workers? It's been hijacked. Hijacked by the Republican radical, anti-jobs, anti-middle class philosophy that has poisoned this Congress. The Republican Party is overtaken by the fringe of its base that the chairman of the committee is unwilling to put up even for consideration a TAA extension that he himself negotiated last year. TAA expired last February, as I said. Without TAA, it will be impossible for me to support any of the FTAs. I am worried about American workers and American jobs. And, gro and trade agreements should make sure that American workers are taken care of, not just that companies make more money. That's good to make more money, but our workers have to be protected as well. Republicans shouldn't be opposing efforts to improve working conditions in FTA partner countries either. Not only is it the right thing to do for workers in those countries, but here in the United States should be the same. It helps to create growing middle classes who can buy U.S. goods and services, including the Columbia Action Plan language that the Democrats proposed in the Columbia Free Trade Agreement is a normal practice going back to NAFTA. I've been here for all these agreements, and we've always put this kind of language in. And it would cost the Republicans nothing, except their ideology, their theology would be offended. Instead, like the TAA, Republicans have chosen to throw away any chance of bipartisanship again, 
and squandered a big opportunity to build a more broadly based approach to trade. At some time, I hope, we'll act like we actually learned something in the last 30 years and make progress on an economic agenda that isn't entirely led by a dead economic philosophy that failed the American people again and again. I'm not op optimistic, but I hope it can happen.